Hey everybody, it's Professor Snart. I hope you're having a good day. Uh, a quick check in here for our uh, English 1152, our poetry course online. We're getting down to our last couple of units and kind of towards the end of the term. So I'm going to try to actually take us right through all of our final units, uh, moving relatively quickly, but I'll also uh, for sure be checking in, you know, more than just this once before our course is concluded. So just a quick look at our due dates. It's the 17th, Tuesday the 17th while I'm recording this, so we are just moving towards the due date for Unit 9, and then we move into our last three, which I'll look at really quickly here. So Unit 9 had us, um, and there's a note in the announcements about this you might have seen, um, kind of doing the reply part of the group project piece, although we're doing this individually, and not as part of like a discussion board reply, and it's not really a reply in the in the strictest, most literal sense, it's more like uh, you know, like your project made me think of kind of a thing. So we're using uh, the Padlet tool, trying to really make this a mobile assignment. Uh, a little bit tricky, you know, because um, uh, trying to do the mobile assignment, you're also having to sort of hold the, the subject matter from each of the presentations in your mind so you can find something that kind of connects to it. I'm just looking at this, I see lots of folks have done it already. And then what I did to help matters a little bit, even though it's not the prettiest thing to look at, is um, I loaded in uh, a link to, or at least even the, the uh, you know, the title, the poet that was being covered by each of the various groups. And again, uh, at least on my end, you can click into these and then it looks blank, but if you open it in a new window, you can actually see the whole, uh, each of the slides from all the slide decks that uh, the groups, um, the groups presented. So again, trying to uh, have everybody look at other groups work. You're probably not going to remember like little trivia pieces, but just like who was covered, what's the kind of gist of it, the big picture, and then is there something in your daily life that kind of like reminds you of it or makes you think about it or that you can connect to. And again, trying to uh, post a minimum of three pictures. So it's again sort of a reply component, um, or at least it serves that same purpose of having uh, everyone uh, the op giving the people the opportunity to look at everyone else's work, uh, but then sort of taking that reply component beyond just uh, the traditional, you know, reply using the discussion board, and we get, um, you know, often good commentary, but it tends to be uh, very literally connected to the presentation. This gives us the opportunity to both look at presentations, but as you can see even from the various pictures here, to really go, you know, for much further afield and sort of extend those projects out into our daily world. Okay, so that's again due on the 18th, uh, that Wednesday. So then we turn around to our last few units here. Unit number 10 is actually one of the most straightforward, but it's also one that can be uh, the most challenging, which is why really from the get-go of our course weeks ago, like whatever, 10 weeks maybe roughly, um, I was alerting people that I was uh, requiring you to go to like a poetry quote-unquote event um, even those those can be you know a little harder to find than you know if I just asked you to go to a, a movie or even a play or something like that. Um, so we tried to take poetry event as a fairly flexible term, although not so flexible that all of a sudden we were doing things that weren't really poetry related at all. They were artsy or maybe literary writ large, but not really a poetry thing. So. Hopefully you were able to find something. Again, you can always check the poetry events list here um, that I've been adding to when I run into something. You can obviously just use Google to find something that might be in your neck of the woods or downtown Chicago if you wanna make a day of it or whatever the case might be. So there was a really great one uh, just this past Saturday at uh, the Wheaton Public Library, PLR, our uh, COD's um, literary journal, the Prairie Light Review was there doing a kind of a live thing they're also running something on the 25th, which like I say, this happens to be the due date of the poetry event. Uh, but since this is a really, really convenient one and kind of exactly the sort of thing that we're looking for, if you wanna participate here and you're maybe a day late, say on this one, uh, we can be a little bit flexible there. But again, there's been lots of other things that I've posted and you know, Google's your friend on this one. You can always find stuff that's maybe a little more uh, closer to home for you or of interest to you. So again, Back to the actual Unit 10, once you've found that event to attend, it's actually fairly straightforward, just building out a page on your portfolio, you know, poetry event, Unit 10, whatever you want to call it, uh, and then just sort of reporting out. You know, it doesn't need to be a super formal thing. It should be fairly detailed so we know what happened and, you know, 
where it was and what was the atmosphere like and that kind of stuff. It's uh, really great if you can include, uh, you know, pictures or video or other kinds of documentation maybe that you ran into. And again, depending on the event and how formal or informal it is, you might even have the chance to talk with, uh, you know, the poets or performers who are involved to get their perspective as well. Maybe you attended an open mic and you actually were one of the performers. That's a sort of an interesting thing to talk about too. So yeah, again, fairly typical, just to report out here on your portfolio, make sure you publish that page to kind of save your work as a public thing so your website's updated. Post the URL to the discussion board here and then replying to four other posts. Uh, there's usually like a really, really interesting range of things that people have found to do here. And again, hopefully you haven't left it so late that you're really scrambling to do something that's maybe not even totally kind of like a poetry thing. If you're unsure, you can always email me and we can talk about whether the thing you want to do will work, uh, will it sort of work, um, or are there some alternatives maybe that I can point you to. Okay, so that's unit 10. Again, uh, both like really straightforward as far as the assignment, but uh, potentially challenging just as far as making the time and then finding an, an event to attend. Unit 11 is actually one of my favorites, and uh, it comes at the end of our, or towards the end of our course, you know, really sort of strategically here so we can have the opportunity to look back a little bit before we get right to the very end. So for this one, you're gonna use uh, the Google Forms Builder right here, which is actually fairly straightforward, even if you've never used it before. There's a what I hope is a fairly um, transparent or kind of obvious walkthrough of what buttons to click just to do the technical stuff here. And you're just gonna be building a quiz for your fellow classmates to take. Um, you can assign a billion points to it if you want, it doesn't really matter. Um, those points or however well people do or don't do on your quiz that you build, um, it's sort of like irrelevant to the points of the course. It's fun to do to see, just to sort of test your own knowledge a little bit and challenge your, your classmates. But again, the quizzes that you do for this assignment, not the ones that you build, but the ones that you actually take, whatever grade you get or mark you get, uh, it doesn't factor into the, the actual points for the course. So again, it's supposed to be really sort of a fun assignment, uh, interacting with classmates, but in a slightly less conventional way than maybe the old discussion board thing. So you are going to build your own quiz, again, using that Google Forms Builder. You just click the thing that makes it a quiz, and that turns on all the features that you need. Should be between five and ten questions. Again, always trying to do more rather than less. Looking back on just about everything or anything that we've covered, but obviously focusing on the content or the ideas that we've run into. So we don't just want, like, what was the activity in Unit 3 or some, you know, sort of procedural question like that. Uh, and we don't want stuff that's so trivia driven that it's just a tiny little piece of information that's either buried in our course or that we would just have to Google and look up. So trying to find a, this is a good opportunity actually to, to um, put yourself in the role of a teacher and figure out like how do you craft a good question that is both answerable but kind of like meaningful at the same time, right? We don't want to avoid just opinion stuff because that's not really a gradable thing. So it's more challenging than you might think. Uh, so once your quiz is done, uh, you'll post that URL to our discussion board here. Again, uh, all of the how-tos about doing that you uh, will find right here as far as doing feedback, et cetera, et cetera. Getting the URL, you can shorten it so it's not this crazy long thing. You'll post that and then you'll actually do take two other quizzes. This is like, again, kind of like the reply quote unquote function here. Um, and then you're using the reply function after you've done the quiz to, again, like, how did you do? Like, what grade did you get? Uh, did it remind you of something that you forgot? Did you ask a similar question in your quiz or whatever that uh, case might be? So again, three posts total. Your initial post with your quiz that you've created, and then you've taken and replied to two other posts. That would be the second due date for this unit. Um, I don't have us building out our portfolio directly, but you'll notice that once you do that in your Google, using your like your Google account, if you go back to your portfolio and um, uh, edit your portfolio page or build out a new one for the quiz, it's really easy and uh, uh, to just like embed that URL, the same one that you post to the discussion board. Sorry, this one. Uh, if you just uh, do that within your uh, new page that you create, it'll actually populate the thing not just with that link sitting there 
but with the, the quiz itself, it looks pretty swift. Uh, and it's good just to sort of keep our portfolio as up to date and as complete as possible. So again, hopefully kind of a fun um, activity, but also a helpful one for having us really think about the breadth of our course as we get towards the end of it. The grading for this is, again, not based on the, the quiz grade that you get for whatever quizzes you take, but more about the quality of your own quiz and the questions that you're asking, and really, really primarily the feedback that you build in for questions that are correct or incorrect. So in my example here, I don't really build out, whoops, sorry, a whole bunch of feedback. Um, I just show you how to do it. So here, once you do the feedback for what's the correct answer, what's the not correct answer, this is almost where like I'm looking at your quiz to see how robust it is and how kind of detailed and in-depth it is. So that's where you, that's where the effort of your work is, is what I'm looking for and kind of what generates the grade for this particular assignment, not how well you did on the quizzes. Okay, and so that takes us to our very final unit, which is just off the bottom of the screen here. So an invitation to go back into the quiz unit just to see who took your quiz and how they did if you don't do that kind of automatically already. And a quick note that our uh, this is the only unit where I've set up what's called an adaptive release, which means you've got to do something to make the final assignment available. So your screen is going to look just a little bit different than mine here because the instructor student uh, views that uh, are a little bit different. So what you'll see is a little final course feedback, a survey. It's only this one paragraph length question here, anonymous, ungraded. So it's not going to take you like a ton of time, but it is something that I really want you to do. And so to unlock or open up the final assignment, which I can see here, but you won't, all you need to do is make sure that you click the little button that says Mark Reviewed. Basically, it's like you telling me that, yes, I've looked at this piece of content in our course. And you'll see that down at the bottom. Again, it doesn't show up on my screen, but it will on yours. So once you do the survey, you can click that button. And then I just suggest refreshing your page so it's all up to date. And you'll see then, you'll notice the adaptive release thing, our final reflection discussion board. Okay, so this is our last one. Returning to our portfolio again, we already did a version of this for the midterm where we took, I think, three, whatever three you chose of our uh, general course objectives, and you just sort of provided evidence from your work uh, from throughout the course for how you've demonstrated doing these objectives. So we're going to round this out just by doing the last of them, so uh, building out some new pages or a page, providing two examples of projects or works that, work that you've done in previous units throughout the whole course, trying not to duplicate the same piece of evidence over and over again, although honestly, a lot of what we do embodies all of the objectives, so it kind of makes sense that there might be some overlap. Um, but once you're done, then we'll have accounted or you'll have accounted for all of the objectives and tie in kind of your work in the course to how you've demonstrated these objectives. Again, relatively straightforward in as much as we kind of did this already, at least in part for the midterm, so you're not having to redo the ones that you covered, you're just kind of building out to complete that full list. Uh, and then there's one last component here. So now, once you've accounted for all those objectives, the last little thing that I want you to do is uh, maybe build one last portfolio page, and then because we've just been thinking about course objectives, this is like the sort of official formal version of what we cover in our course. But is there something that uh, you feel like you accomplished during the course or you did that isn't really identified directly as a course objective? Um, and hopefully you can find something or formulate something since we've done such, I hope, a wide range of things, but also a lot of different kinds of creative things. So maybe not just read a poem, write an essay, read another poem, write an essay, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so what's something that, you know, is a course objective that you c accomplished or something that you did in the course that isn't maybe captured in here? Can you think of something? Um, and then, you know, discuss that in a paragraph or two. Again, tied spe to the specifics of your actual work for the course. You don't want to pick something that's just a rewording of one of these. You really want to try to find something that exists uh, largely outside of these kinds of things that you feel like was meaningful and that you did um, almost unintentionally a little bit as part of our course or maybe just that wasn't exactly captured in those formal course objectives. 
Uh, again, as always, make sure you're hitting that publish button so that your saved work actually becomes public so we can all see it. Post your URL to the discussion board here. And then to wrap things up, it's just off the bottom here, reply to at least four of your classmates' final reflections. So again, that double due date system. So that takes us right to the end. So a quick recap of our due dates moving forward, and then I'll wrap it up. Okay. So again, uh, finishing up unit nine for that Wednesday, then we're back to our double due date system, poetry event, quiz time, and then our final reflection, and that those replies take us right to the end of the term, and then I think it's, uh, it's finals week after that. We don't have anything that goes into finals week. Once we're done here, we are done. Okay, so that's a long announcement, but it kind of takes us all the way to the end of our course. Again, as always, if you have any questions or concerns, you can reach out to me, um, and I'll certainly check in with everybody much shorter, I promise, uh, as we get towards the end of our course.